Okay, guys. Tomorrow, 3 o'clock, NRG Stadium, Houston Texans and Miami Dolphins. They wrapped up their joint practices yesterday. DJ Bieniemy, who's going to join me in the 11 o'clock hour, and I talked about it on a recent episode of the Talking Texans podcast. Get it wherever you get your podcast, or again, watch it on the ESPN Houston YouTube channel. Damn, I'm doing a great job with the plugs. And we talked about what the Texans have done the last two days at joint practices, and, and DJ's going to share more on this with you because he's been out there in the 11 o'clock hour. But it's been a mixed bag for CJ Stroud, and I would say that there's been a continuation from what he told me of the hesitation, the lack of decisiveness in these joint practices against a very good Dolphins defense. One of the best secondaries in the NFL, even without Jalen Ramsey. One of the best defensive lines in the NFL. Texans don't have 100% of their starters on the offensive line healthy. There's no Titus Howard. Juice Scruggs is a rookie. There are some real questions about how they're going to be able to protect him. So here's what I'm looking for from C.J. Stroud tomorrow night. What I want from Stroud isn't anything flashy, isn't anything special. I know a lot of you guys want him to go out there and to go absolutely gangbusters. Here's what I want. I want to see what he did on the second drive against the Patriots. I want him to get the ball out quick. Whether that means throwing to his checkdowns or throwing the ball away, that's the development I want. It's going to take time for him to feel comfortable in this offense, getting the ball out on time to wide receivers who, let's be honest, aren't that good. The Dolphins secondary, even without Jalen Ramsey, should be able to erase the likes of Robert Woods at this phase of his career, Noah Brown, and Nico Collins. Dalton Schultz is really the only guy that I feel like the Texans have an edge with. And it's a reason why a lot of people who are following the Texans think that he's probably going to lead the team in targets this coming season. But you can't throw it to the tight end every play. And you can't throw it to covered wide receivers either if you don't want to turn the football over, like that awful interception that Stroud threw. I want him to be careful with the ball. And that might be hard. And and this is all you can really do in the preseason. But if he's behind that bad offensive line, I imagine he's not going to have much time. And that indecisiveness is going to catch up with him. So I'd rather him almost be decisive in this situation by checking the ball down and throwing it out of bounds than looking to make the big plays that I think all of us want to see to confirm that this guy is special. I just don't think that you're going to see those special moments in the way you want them in this preseason. It's, it's a byproduct of the way it is. And by the way, that's not the end of the world. As we talked about on Monday's show, if you take a look at the guys who were playing in the preseason, the other rookie quarterbacks, specifically Bryce Young, I heard the bench mentioning it today. When he got hit, he looked like a toddler getting hit by an SUV. Like, it wasn't good. He looks like a kicker as it is out there. Get some tattoos, man. You look like a kicker. It's it's a byproduct of your size. Maybe I need to get tattoos to look a little tougher. I don't know if if people would buy into it. But to go back to Stroud, like, these other guys aren't really flashing either. Like, Anthony Richardson looked fun. That doesn't mean he looked good. So I'm really looking for from... These joint practices, going up against that Dolphins defense, going up against Vic Fangio, where he's disguising things and making things complicated. I just want him to be quick with getting rid of the football. You don't have to win on every down. I would rather a guy learn that he can be, yeah, conservative the first couple of games in the league, especially when that offensive line theoretically could get him killed like it almost did on Thursday night. Yeah, I, the offensive line thing's really the... I, it, it, it's so weird because we think like, oh yeah, we'll we'll get a little taste of what we have in the regular season, uh, in the in the preseason games, it's and then that. yeah, and then the offensive lines. It's like actually the offensive line is so uncompetitive that like nope, week one against the Ravens is when we'll see like the actual, you know, the that CJ Stroud here is just kind of, I don't know. He's working through some things, but it's not anything that it seems super uh, translatable given the offensive line, you know? 100%. And with that in mind, too, also think about this. Um, Damian Pierce expects to play. He did not play on Thursday. 
if this team does anything of consequence this year, it's going to be largely, I think, on the shoulders of the running game. It's going to be Damian Pierce. It's going to be Devin Singletary. It's going to be Mike Boone, who I thought had some glimpses uh, as well. And, and Dario Bungawale. Sorry, you're done. You, you shouldn't have fumbled that ball. Oh. He's done. He's done. He fumbled. Can't fumble. Not with, like, Boone looked better, and then you fumble, and it was like an unforced fumble. I have a soft spot for Dare just because he's he's one of the Texans from the dark times. <laughs> I don't want the any last of those. two years. I'm sorry. L- Laramie Tunsil is one of the Texans from the dark times. <laughs> I don't want the guy who's like, oh, wait, well, I guess he's better than Rex Burkhead. Yeah. Sometimes that that's and, and it's again, nothing against Daria Bungawale. Everybody who's made it to the NFL. Like, I do respect the fact that you got there. But there's another element of like, hey, man, like. I, I want to see better players out there. Hopefully we will. We'll see what happens Saturday, 3 o'clock at NRG Stadium. I will be there probably wandering around at some point. I wonder if they have El Tiempo margaritas at NRG Stadium and how much they would cost. I saw they have Trill Burgers. Uh, I did see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cal McNair uh, was was posting up. Yeah, with, with Bun B. With Bun B, yeah. Nick Skirfield, too. So Nick's, we, we want Bun B on the show. Nick, can we can we make it happen? Sent him a text, he didn't respond, so I'm just going to do it over the radio. 